Hello everyone, welcome to this week's MathCast podcast. Today we are joined by Mr. Parker, who is a guitarist and a drummer. We are also joined by Chloe DaCosta, who is a creative and performing arts scholar. And today we will be discussing how music and maths collide. Let's get started. So which passion did you discover first, Mr. Parker? Was it music or maths? Uh, Definitely music, definitely music. But only because I was listening to music before I went to school and, and discovered maths was a thing. And as soon as I discovered maths was something that I was good at, um, you know, even as soon as being in reception and like five years old counting and whatever else, like as, as soon as I discovered that I was good at it, that that then became my next love, and I, I fell into maths and have always been good at maths, always clicked with maths, and it was it was just something that I was always really good at and and loved, um, and it wasn't until probably. Uh, about eight years old or nine years old that I started to learn guitar and then realised just how linked maths is with music. I think the first thing that made me come across that was just the fact that the most basic thing that you do in music or you learn in music is how to count. And if you can count in time, then obviously you, ha- you have rhythm or you have an appreciation for rhythm and that, that is basically maths. It's, it's very basic maths, but it's maths. I fell into music first as well because I stole my dad's music taste and I still do. Um, but I, I actually didn't fall into math until year seven. It, definitely music first, but math was a close second. Mr. Parker, you mentioned how you realized that math and music link. So could we just zoom into that a little bit? When did it click that they were so similar? Because me, for me personally, math and music were two ends of a spectrum. Like math was based on logic and music is very cre- uh, much a creative subject. So how do they uh, sort of link? I think the main link is is the structure of it. Like music is very structured. Um, to read music and to write music, you need to follow uh, um, particular rules and, and in a way that maths is structured, music music kind of follows the same, same kind of patterns. Um, for example, yeah, in, in a scale there are eight notes, but there are also like 12 semi notes I can't think of the right word, and Mr. Isabel will probably correct me. But mm-hmm. there are there are twelve. Like if you look at a piano, there are twelve keys within a, a, a scale, and then it ends on the thirteenth one. Um, so it, it's all linked back to numbers in somehow, and it, it follows some structure. And that you know, it's fascinating. The more you dig into music, the more you think about the maths that is there. The more you find. It's just to the casual listener, it just sounds like something nice, and you know to somebody who digs into it a little bit deeper, you start to spot these strange patterns that you just didn't know were there. For example, one of the things that fascinated me the most was when I started to really study music and then you listen to some popular music on the radio, why is it that all bars or most bars tend to have four beats in them? Why do verses have four lines in them and there are four beats in a a line, so that's four times four, that's 16 beats in a verse, and why is that why is that the accepted thing in popular music? You know, it's, it's just fascinating. You mentioned that the piano has uh, 13 keys from C to C. I also found that it has five black keys and eight white keys. So, and each one of them is a Fibonacci number, which I find is really cool that it just incorporates it. I don't know if it was done on purpose or if it was an accident, but maybe, maybe someone will let us know. Uh, Mr. Parker, you'll know this, but a couple months ago, when I first started getting into math, I wrote this write-up, which you had asked us to do, and I did it on the Rekaman sequence. Mm-hmm. So I, so that went from something math, um, music derived from math, which I wasn't used to, and I got really confused at that, but I also thought it was really enjoyable, and that's why I wrote another one. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Um, reading your paper on that, it kind of got me back into looking for strange pieces of maths and, and finding pieces of music that derive from maths, like you said. Um, as you know, I'm a, I'm a massive heavy metal fan and I always have been. Um, a band that I listen to called Tool released uh, an album and a song on that called Lateralis or, or something along those lines. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and it is one of the most fascinating songs that I think has ever been written for the simple reason that Tool decided when they were structuring the song to include um, the number of beats for each line of the verse follows the Fibonacci sequence from 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13 and then reverses that process. So to the casual listener, it sounds really strange because it's not following a, a kind of conventional number of beats, but it sounds a little bit weird whereas if you dig a little bit deeper they've actually written it purposely to be a math sequence which again is is 
it's just something that is really interesting you know, why would they decide to do that it's just it's thinking outside the box to the next level in my opinion and I'm pretty sure, Mr. Parker, you mentioned at the, st at the start with like how rhythm is just like music in disguise, sort of. And you're just hearing like a continuous of continuous patterns shaped like differently. And that's just uh, and the essence what music is, just patterns. Yeah, I mean, I could probably show you a, a couple of bits on a drum kit that kind of illustrate what you're saying there. Um, in music, if you can count um, and you can you know, you just assign beats to different parts of the count, different numbers, you just get different results. So when I was learning to drum, you have to try and split your limbs so that you can control your right hand, your right foot and your left hand all at, at the same time, but doing different things. So for example, I'll just get on the drum kit. So if I just add, add together these three patterns here. Warning to headphone users, by the way. Yeah, so my right foot, if I just count along and go, and I just do that with my right foot. At the same time, with my right hand, if I'm then going. And then with my left hand, if I then go. Now they all sound like pretty standard patterns, but you put that together and you get something like this. Which, you know, and that's all down to just rhythm and counting. Like you put the beat in the right place and on the right number and you have something that sounds completely different. Crazy how two things which like from a surface level, they seem completely unrelated like math and music, but they come together in such a nice way. And that song that um, was made using just all like numbers turned out to be like pretty good, even though it was just like numbers in music. Yeah, there's another one. You can do a bit of Googling or look, have a quick look on YouTube and there are a number of people who've done it. There's another guy who um, he decided to write a metal song by transposing the digits of pi into hexadecimal numbers and then assigned those to different patterns that he then played on a guitar to write a metal song. And it basically sounds like, like a progressive metal song, but just completely generated by a number, which again is, it's just it's a little bit odd that somebody would decide to do that but it's just fascinating that it actually works like all of this stuff all of these numbers that just crop up in music they just work and there are some things that sound good and some things that don't sound good and, and it's all to do with the the position of that note within its scale which is a number and, and again it's just fascinating um one thing that I, I mentioned to you earlier before we started recording um if you go all the way back to black sabbath which was kind of the, maybe one of the considered one of the first heavy metal bands the first song of their first album was actually uh, it was actually written using something called I, I think it's something a tritone or something like that it was known as the devil's note which is basically um six semi notes into the scale rather than seven if it was seven semi notes into the scale it would sound good six actually sounds evil and it was considered as an evil note for hundreds and hundreds of years and it was banned from being used in churches so obviously Black Sabbath come along, first song they release, they release something with the devil's number in it, obviously. But again, it's, it's something where just the fact that the number six is used there has such big connotations in the music and that, that, that always fascinated me. And I have done some work on Mobius strips as well. So like combining the worlds of math and music and one per, and someone decided to put box notation, like box pieces of music, some, one of his canons I think and they put on a Mobius strip and it's like playing something to a mirror but one hand's playing the piece of music the right way around and the other's playing it the wrong way around and it just continuously keeps on going on like that and I actually once saw someone try to make like a trumpet that looked kind of like a Klein bottle and I thought that was really interesting uh, so a Klein bottle is like this mathematical shape which and uh very technically it has no volume and this guy tried to fill it up with water because he used like a pressurized pump so i thought that was really cool to watch all right thank you so much for listening and hopefully now you understand that there is a link between uh maths and music and hopefully you enjoyed thank you so much for listening <laughs>